Hello. Hey, Miko. Hello. Yeah, you still need to go to the uh, the store? Yes, I do. All right. I'm about to come pick you up. Come outside. All right, cool. All right. Well, my personality is I, I feel like I'm very chill. I, I, I crack jokes. I joke a lot. I have fun. And with Miko, she's doing a radio show that's on every weekend on uh, 560 AM in Miami. And um, she's a sports talk radio person right now. She's more, I guess you could say, controversial. <laughs> To make the team as an undrafted free agent, you had to make the most out of the opportunities. You have to make plays. My very first rapper got an interception, and that really let me know um, that I belong here and I you can was play. That nigga, <laughs> and you that was the man. The Miami Dolphins. Um, I'm very thankful for the organization because they treat me very well, and I didn't experience that in Atlanta. The business part of the NFL is tough. It's a rude awakening that it is a business and there's a lot of actual business decisions that go on that may not make the most sense. Can I translate his answer? Miko's translation to that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, just because you're the best player on the team doesn't mean you're gonna get paid or played. If they do not draft you, you will never be seen as anything until you get an opportunity. And if that draft pick is a bomb, is washed, is not good, they're going to continue to play that person even if this guy that wasn't drafted is better than him. They can't look bad. They can't look like they drafted the wrong guy. The NFL is both. No fun league and it's not for long. It's a lot of people that come in with a lot of high hopes thinking they're gonna have this really long NFL career. I think that the league is basically wants all these guys to be robots. They wanna brainwash them. You can't have any identity. You can't be original. Look at how they find you if your sock isn't the exact length from your ankle to your knee. There's just too many specific stupid rules that have nothing to do with putting the ball in the end zone. And to me, it's just about control and making sure no one thinks that they're special, no one thinks that they're an individual. Some of my best games is coming right off of one. Right off this pussy. <laughs> Three hours before kickoff. He plays his best football. A lot of women tell me that their husbands or boyfriends won't have sex like a, like maybe 48 hours before the game. No, you gotta release that. You gotta get that out. And that's why I go to all the games on the road trips. When I saw the Ray Rice video, the first thing I saw was, damn, you know, that's, wow. It looked crazy. It looked really crazy. When I first saw that Ray Rice video, I said, is he trying to cover up a murder? Like, cause I thought she was dead at first. I was like, why did he drag her body out? I didn't see any remorse or any like, like scared, like to like, you know, trying to wake her up or anything like that. When you see your wife on the floor unconscious, at some point you have to snap and say, oh my God, that's my wife. And try to wake her up and try to like call 911 and get some, and, and get some, some help for her in case she really is dead or dying. Cause I know people slap people all the time and not saying it's right. But when you see the person unconscious and you don't do anything about it, that's the part that kind of made me like, fuck you, Ray Rice. Yeah, that fun. It was so fun. I wish you could have rode for like three hours. I had some more shit. We're home. <laughs> <laughs>